Hi dear cricket fans, subscribers and friends of Cricket Happenings, welcome to your show. Uh, well, the first thing that we are going to look at is between England and Australia on the day two uh, on at the Sydney Cricket Ground where uh, Australia actually were bowled out for 280. Uh, it was uh, That was the first match that we will look at and then we will look at India versus South Africa. So for speaking about uh, stumps on day two, Australia 280 all out and then England at stumps were 167 for three in reply. Uh, probably uh, looking good now because they have only 113 runs more uh, to make to actually take the lead. And I think Australia have to really work hard in this test match too. Uh, but I thought still Australia uh, did well uh, with the bowling of uh, Johnson who actually took two wickets and uh, to just uh, set England back uh, by a few runs I would say uh, to restrict them to 167 for three on the second day. Well, as far as Australia were concerned, as you know, Hussey and Haddon uh, resumed the innings there and Haddon was the first to go as he was caught behind the bowling of Anderson for six. So he was the first. Stephen Smith joined in Michael Hussey uh, and uh, the, the pair took on the score down to 171 uh, at which point, uh, in fact, it was, uh, I mean, Haddon was the, once Haddon went, uh, Hussey uh, just started playing around and both of them uh, were trying to, you know, uh, just improve the situation with Stephen Smith also curbing his uh, stroke making ability and uh, plodding a bit but uh, Michael Hussey got a beautiful delivery from Collingwood which actually came in and uh, took the inside edge of Hussey's bat and into the stump she went and Michael Hussey was gone bowled by Collingwood for 33 with two boundaries and that was a big blow for England because uh, basically Collingwood was bowling the last ball with the old ball and the new ball was taken and uh, well uh, once the new ball was taken uh, Smith was a victim there as uh, Smith fell to Anderson as he was caught by Collingwood uh, for 18 with 1-4 and the only person who really played well was Mitchell Johnson uh, who was the highest scorer in this particular um, uh, particular test match where uh, Mitchell Johnson, uh, I mean he was the highest scorer in this Australian innings when uh, he cracked a few boundaries and also hit a swax, he, in, in fact he hit a 6 of uh, Swan uh, also and he played some very good strokes he had hit five fours and one six to make 53 of 66 balls with five fours and one six uh, and then um, Peter Siddle was gone as Peter Siddle was caught by straws of the bowling of Anderson for two Ben Hilfenhaus gave company to Johnson uh, by actually pushing the score one Siddle was gone 189 for eight it looked like Australia might be bowled out for 200 but thanks to Johnson and Hilfenhaus uh, actually putting up a very good stand, I would say, very important stand under the circumstances because it's almost 75 runs were added with Ben Hinfanaus also playing very well for his 34 or 58 balls with 3 fours and 1 6 uh, and uh, well that was a very entertaining stand uh, I would say for Australia but uh, it really it was a very very valuable contributions but then Johnson was out as uh, Johnson had screen bowled by Bresnan for 53 with 5 fours and 1 6 Hilfenhaus was caught behind the bowling of Anderson for 34 with three fours and one six and Michael Beer remained not out on two on his debut. 280 all out uh, Australia in their first innings. Anderson 30.1 over seven minutes, four for 66 was the most successful bowler. Trimmed at 26 overs, nine minutes, one for 71. Bresson 30 overs, five minutes, three for 89. Bowled well. Swan 16 overs, four minutes, one for 37. And Paul Calling with four overs, two minutes, one for five. That vital wicket of Michael Hussey. Uh, but um, now uh, the other only thing that I would, and then we have to talk about England's first innings. Uh, well, uh, England started off. In fact, they had a very good partnership. In fact, uh, they came close to a century partnership here uh, with Strauss playing like uh, runner ball stuff. He played absolutely one day stuff by actually cracking a lot of boundaries on the offside, and he was very severe on any short deliveries by pulling them. And then Alistair Cook and Strauss went on in their merry way. In fact, Alistair Cook was real circumspect, but. Andrew Strauss was the one who was playing with like oozing out of confidence. He was playing an absolute one day mode, motoring along at a rapid rate. And finally, uh, at the score at 98, that stand, the opening stand came to an end when actually Hilfenhaus went through the defenses of Strauss. Strauss was bowled by Hilfenhaus for 60 or 58 balls with 8 fours and 1 6. A wonderful knock, uh, 98 for 1, just setting the tempo for England there. But Jonathan Trott, uh, who, was, um, who was very, very impressive, fell to Johnson as Johnson actually had him clean bowled for a duck. So that was um, 99 for 2 and then uh, Peterson joined uh, Cook and Peterson and Cook started the 
cobbling together a stand there uh, by taking the uh, make, uh, taking a six, making a 66 run stand between them but then Peterson was gone when Peterson was caught in the deep by Beer who actually took his uh, first catch as a debutant of the bowling of Johnson for 36 or 70 work for and Johnson let me tell you was bowling superbly yesterday uh, and it left Alistair Cook not out on 61 at close with six fours looking very good for another century I would say and James Anderson the night watchman not out on one 167 for three England finished with a close of play 113 or trailing by 113 runs and the bowling figures Elfin was 14 over stream and one for 52 Mitchell Johnson was absolutely superb one was seeing that he was getting the swing and the movement like how uh, in a particular test match he took six wickets so there was some splendid stuff from Johnson Mitchell Johnson 12 overs 2 minutes 2 for 42 Peterson 10 overs 2 minutes none for 33 um, uh, Shane Watson 3 overs none for 9 and Michael Beer bowled 9 overs for 26 runs was quite impressive there so uh, England uh, are the ones who have to actually uh, you know they have to take a big lead in this series and I'm sure uh, the they have good batting it to, to come Collingwood has to run into form uh, Bell have Bell and Pryor as you know they can play well and then Alistair Cook is still there so uh, we can look forward to a good day but I think uh, it is seemingly contested right now going into the third day well so let's shift the attention now to South Africa where um, in, uh, where it was um, India actually uh, replying to the 362 all out by South Africa uh, with, with Tendulkar and Gambhir at the crease and Tendulkar and Gambhir in fact the first over ball by Dale Steen on the on the third day three was a really really terrific over which he bowled to the maestro Sachin Tendulkar and Sachin Tendulkar survived that by because repeatedly uh, Steen actually beat the bat of the maestro and also uh, had him napping at times and uh, finally um, uh, in Tendulkar broke it by actually creaming him through extra cover for a boundary but after that um, and Tendulkar was really tested today but it was a very good uh, innings under the circumstances and uh, it was um, Gautam Gambhir was giving company Gautam Gambhir also played well and they pushed on the score to a very good score in fact they took on the score from 28 for 2 to 204 for 3 uh, they resumed at the 142 and then they took on the score to 204 with Gambhir also playing some stroke but was, Gambhir was also I wouldn't say playing with lots of confidence he was also really tested there but then Harris uh, had him as um, uh, he got one through the rough there and Boucher held the catch Gambhir was gone missing his century caught Boucher bowl Harris for 93 with 13 fours Tendulkar was there and after that suddenly wicket started falling uh, because uh, Dale Steen was absolutely superb uh, the first one to fall was uh, Lakshman who was uh, uh, unfortunately run out by Harris for 15 of 19 balls with three fours Cheteshwar Pujara got a good ball from Steen and he was LBW bowled Dale Steen for two uh, Dhoni was caught behind caught by Prince so the balling of Steen for a duck uh, with a short delivery from Steen and suddenly Steen was really breathing far he was uh, balling at full throttle and he was looking absolutely menacing after that Harbhajan Singh came in and gave Tendulkar the company and reach, helped Tendulkar actually reach his 51st test century uh, and uh, Arbhajan Singh also started indulging in his pyrotechnics by actually uh, creaming Markel for a six and then hitting uh, Dale Steen over long on for a six and this went on uh, till 323 that was also a very important uh, partnership uh, which was there because it yielded 76 runs for India with Harbhajan Singh giving company uh, to help Sachin Tendulkar to his century but Harbhajan Singh again Steen came in and actually had him caught by Dumini for 40 of 67 balls with three fours and two sixes uh, after that uh, Zahir Khan came in uh, and gave company to Tendulkar but Tendulkar himself was dismissed by beautiful delivery from uh, Mon Markel which actually held its line and went on to hit the off bail of the stumps and Tendulkar was gone bowled by Mon Markel for 146 of 314 balls 17 fours and two sixes his 51st test century and 97th uh, in his overall career uh, Zahir Khan uh, and uh, he, uh, Jahir Khan and Sri 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 was not out on four uh, and Zahir Khan also indulged in some uh, good hitting by hitting two sixes and one four in his score of 23 of 22 balls before becoming a victim of Markel caught by Prince of the bowling of Markel in the deep Eastern Sharma was caught behind the bowling of Dale Steen to give Dale Steen figures of 31 overs 11 minutes 75 runs and five wickets and Sri Sant was not out on four 364 all out India taking a lead of a slender two runs just two runs uh, lead uh, and um, the bowling figures uh, Dale Steen was superb as I said and Mon Markel 29.1 over 7 minutes 2406 also bowled well so Tsobe 26 over 5 minutes none for 82 was a bit unlucky Paul Harris 29 over 8 minutes 1 for 72 was trying to always trying to hit the rough and get some turn and Albert Peterson 2 overs no matter none for 9 
Uh, so with the two run lead, South Africa walked in and Smith and Peterson, the opening partnership was very good. They were very, very watchful. Uh, Zahir Khan and Srisanth could not do uh, much like what Dale Steen and Mon Morkel could do. Uh, but uh, the South Africans were also very, very cautious. And uh, Graham Smith and Peterson, uh, uh, I mean, uh, survived the initial battle against Zahir Khan and Srisanth and took on the score to 50 uh, before uh, Graham Smith was the first to go as Harbhajan Singh struck uh, in quick succession as the first he had Graham Smith LBW for 29 or 47 balls or three fours and this was Harbhajan actually getting the uh, turn out of the rough uh, which is which was which I said is going to be very important Harbhajan Singh is going to play a major role because there is already a rough created and Harbhajan Singh will definitely take advantage of that and they did as, as the night watchman walked in and he was gone LBW bowled Harbhajan to a ball which he didn't play a stroke and Harris was trapped LBW by Harbhajan Singh for a duck Albert Peterson was not out on 22 at close Hashim Amla keeping company not out on not 52 for two wickets Harbhajan was the one who actually did the strike and gave India the initiative there and well uh, that's it India India uh, South Africa finished at 52 for two uh, they, and uh, and as far as uh, the bowling first, Zahid Khan 5 was none for 25, Shri Sun 5 was none for 20, Ishan Sharma 3 was none for 3, Harbhajan Singh 3 was none for 2 for 4. That brings to an, an end to my uh, cricket report here uh, on the third day. And that's it, dear cricket fans, uh, subscribers, and friends for cricket happenings. This is now I'm signing off. Thank you.